Hello, I'm Katherine Legrand. Welcome to my South Durham, North Carolina food studio. Today I'll be sharing some tips with you for practicing the first movement of Quantas Concerto in G major. Practice phrase outlines to create good phrase shapes and to keep the rhythm steady. For example, the arpeggio in measures 36 through 41. In 36, you have an A major arpeggio. In 37, a D major arpeggio. An E minor arpeggio in 38. In measure 40, it's a B minor arpeggio. And in measure 41, G major. And another D major arpeggio in measure 39. So if you practice those phrase outlines in the context of the piece, it would sound like this, starting in measure 35. Rhythm is always very important. There are many occurrences of an eighth note followed by two sixteenths in this piece. Be careful that the eighth note is always the correct length and that the two sixteenths don't compress or rush. Examples of some measures where this happens are measures 28, 34, 35, measures 39 through 41, 43, 49, 69, and 74. There are probably others, but that's a few anyway. You might try subdividing the eighth note into two sixteenths to be sure it's the correct length. And in the measures with the trills, first eliminate the trill completely, playing two of the same pitch on the first note, as in measure 28. and add the top note of the trill, in this case the G, as the first of the two sixteenth notes on the eighth note rhythm. Be careful that the rest in measures 42 through 44 are accurate. You can actually practice making a sound in the rest to help you or even play an additional note. You can practice your beatboxing. I've noticed a lot of students have trouble playing the rhythm in measure 85 correctly. Be sure that your uh, pairs of sixteenths don't rush and that your quarter note is the correct length. I suggest practicing it subdivided quite a lot, even after you've learned it so you're sure you're not rushing. Be careful not to rush the syncopations in measures 94 through 96 and measures 101 through 103. Again, I suggest practicing these rhythms subdivided even after you know the piece very well to prevent rushing. In 
larger rhythmic units, such as half notes or even whole measures, to create good rhythmic flow and phrasing. To create very clear articulations, try playing from the underneath side of your upper lip, the wet part up in there, to help aim the air down into your flute. You can practice making a popping kind of sound between the underneath side of your upper lip and the surface area of your tongue like this. Then try that on the flute. When double tonguing, keep the angle of the front of your tongue identical between the syllables. There's rhythm, and then there's the rhythm of the articulations. Try practicing the passages with combination tonguings by playing the tonguing pattern on one pitch, and I would use double tonguing while doing this. For example, the passage in measure 47 to 48, I would practice first just on one pitch like this. Then I would go back and play only the tongued notes, sustaining my tone through the slur. Plan your breaths carefully. Always practice the way you mark your breathings. And always have a backup plan. The longest passage of this piece begins in measure 79 and goes all the way to measure 87. If you find you can't make it completely through the passage in one breath, try leaving out one note and breathing in the exact rhythm of that note. I suggest the last note of measure 80 for this purpose. Okay, now on to the ornaments. These are hard. Yes, they are. It helps a lot if you, ha if you use strong top notes on your trills. Um, for example, the measure 28, again, if we look at that once more, I had you practice it earlier using uh, subdividing into sixteenths, playing the top note of the trill, the G is your first note. And you can then add your trill on the second note of that rhythm. Be sure to keep your right index finger really close to the flute when you're doing that trill. Again, in measures 50 and 51, be sure the top note of the trill is exactly on the beat and really strong. Whoa. 